I am Tracy Phobes. I've been blogging for just about 11 years now and had to figure out how to go with the flow as I'm showing you guys right here. Um, but basically, one thing that I started doing a few years ago was selling digital products. There was a great need for this on my site, Penny Pension Mom. And so I decided to put some time and effort into this and have been amazed at how much money is to be made. So that's what I'm wanting to do with all of you. For the next three days, we're going to go over all sorts of really great pieces of information that you need to know about when it comes to selling printable products. So as you have questions, please pop into the chat here and leave that. I will be answering all the questions at the end of the webinar just to kind of keep them all grouped together. Uh, one thing that's going to be really exciting is I will be doing some live brainstorming on a few of your sites today. So thank you all for leaving your links. It was completely random. I kind of did an eeny, meeny, miny, mo and pip. So let's get started. So first off, why do we want to sell digital products? Number one reason is that you can control your income. Now we all know about ad networks like Mediavine and Monumetric and AdThrive and that's great. But the problem is in order to make money from those companies, you need one thing, traffic. So if you don't have a lot of traffic, you may not be able to make much money. However, a digital product doesn't really require you to have loads and loads of traffic to make a good income month after month. So that's one thing to consider. You need to also think about affiliate income. That also requires some traffic, but even more than that, you have to have a click and a conversion, which the conversion is when they complete the action and they purchase through your link. Again, those can be very difficult to control. When you sell digital products, you're in control. There's no one taking a cut of anything like they do in affiliate marketing or even in your ad network. It's all your money. And so that's a great reason alone to want to sell. We talk a lot about diversification of income. And so it's really important that you find as many revenue streams to feed into the money your blog makes with products being one, affiliate marketing and ad networks. And they all three can work together to bring in a substantial amount of money month after month. You also want to sell because other people are doing it. Now this is, you think about your parents and you probably all heard it when you were growing up. If your friends are all jumping off a bridge, would you jump too? Well, no, except when it comes to selling digital products. If everybody else is selling it, then it tells you there's a market for that. You have to take away that component of, you know, what you're afraid to do and be willing to try it. Don't just sit back and think, oh my goodness, no one would ever buy from me. You don't know that. But because other people are doing that, even in your niche, we can find a way to find the perfect product that you can sell to your customers. Now, readers also like to get printables. If you think about it, you probably have opt-ins on your site and they're signing up left and right to get whatever freebie it is you have to offer, right? Well, it's the same thing. They'll even maybe pay for that. And sometimes, there's more of a vested interest when they pay versus something free. So if they pay to get your amazing planner, they're going to use it. Whereas if it's free, they may not really use that and they may not want to get feedback. So just some things to keep in mind. Now, what in the world do you sell? Question I get probably more frequently than anything else. There are so many different things you can sell. There's templates. There could be Pinterest templates. It could be a budget template. It could be a meal planning template. It could be even a homeschool schedule template. Anything that someone can fill out in a simple format can be sold. Spreadsheets are really big, especially for people who do anything money related. A spreadsheet where they enter a couple of pieces of data and have a completely formatted calculated spreadsheet is huge. Photos, if you are a photographer selling photos, lay flats and things like that are great products to sell. Worksheets and workbooks. This is a really big one. Um, I think a lot of times that when you think of this, you might think of the financial niche like financial planning workbooks, but it can be all sorts of things. One of my clients created a gratitude journal and it's 80 pages of how to teach your kids to be grateful. 
So a worksheet or a workbook is great. Planners are another one that people also really love because people want to be organized. Holiday planners, meal planners, homeschooling planners, workout planners, to-do lists, those types of things are also products that you could potentially sell to your list. Now, you know what you might be able to sell, but how do you know what you should sell? Million dollar question. There's some different things that are out there to help you figure out what will work. And we're going to do one of these live here in just a couple of minutes. But the first one is to look at the content on your site. What is it you are talking about with your readers right now that you might be able to use to convert into a paying product? So we have to look at what's already there. I'm not going to recommend that you just run out and create some brand new product you've never talked about. Instead, we're going to use what's already there. If you are getting traffic to a post already, it makes sense to find a product that you can sell on that post. People are telling you they love it, they want to read it, they might be signing up for your list because of it. That is the perfect post in which to create a, a product of some sort. You can also ask your readers. Poll them, ask them on Facebook, send them an email. They're going to tell you what they like or don't. They're going to be pretty honest. So use them as a great resource in trying to determine what in the world you can sell on your site. You also will want to research your competitors. Now, this doesn't mean you're going to do what they're doing. That's not it at all. What I'm talking about here when it's researching your competitors is where you will look to see what they are doing and try to do it differently or better. You might have purchased something from somebody and you feel that it's missing these three components. That right there tells you that you could create a similar type of a product, but you can put your own unique spin on it. You never want to use what someone else is doing and just you know, basically do the same thing. That makes no sense. It's tacky, number one. And number two, why would you do the same thing everyone else is doing? You need to find a way to do it different. Look like Coke and Pepsi. They're both cola products, but they both taste different. They have found something different to do in their formula that appeals to different audiences. It's the same thing with your printable. You can do the same type of a printable, but you'll just do it differently enough that yours is not the exact same thing as your competition. Another thing to think about is converting your free offer to a paid one. And I know a lot of bloggers, they kind of cringe at this thinking, oh my goodness, that'll make everybody mad. Who? Who is going to be mad that you offered something for free and now it's paid? The people who already got it for free have it. They're not asking for it again. And the people who are going to pay don't know it was free previously, right? You have to look at your blog as a business. There's a sale at your grocery store and it was buy one, get one free this week on oranges. And you really needed oranges, but you forgot to go buy. So when you go in next week, that sale is gone and you're going to pay full price. You're not going to think twice about that. You're just going to suck it up and pay. It's that same theory when it comes to converting the free offer. Just because it was free last week does not mean that you cannot have a reader pay for it now. So don't overlook those freebies you have in finding a way to turn a free product into a paid product. Oops, there we go, went too far, there we go. Now let's talk about how we make that printable. There are some different things you can use. There are third-party sites, PicMonkey, Canva, Photoshop, InDesign, Adobe, that you can use to create a printable. And the thing is, I think people feel like if I'm not a designer, I can't make a printable. And that's really not true. Your readers are less worried about it being all fancy schmancy as much as they are about it solving a problem and fulfilling a purpose. Obviously, you're not just going to do something white, you know, white background with black text on it. That's boring. But you don't have to be a high-end designer to be able to make something your readers will love. You might want to hire it out. If you're just struggling 
that's when you should hire it because you could make an investment of $75 to have somebody make a printable and it will take you no time at all to recoup that expense and then you'll be running it all on profit. So that's a really good way to do it. But now let's talk about a couple things with your printables. First off, it needs to be legible. Like I said, a white paper with just black lettering, pretty boring, right? But what would be worse is if you had that same thing, but it had all kinds of fancy script font, or if the entire thing was on a pink background. Do you know how much ink it would take to print a, something that has a huge pink background? Oh, heaven, so much. And that can deter a reader, and they might feel it's too much for them to want to print. So when it comes to your printable, the number one factor to keep in mind is you want to make sure that it solves the need of your customer in the simplest way possible. And simple means not ink after ink after ink after ink. Keep that in mind. Now, once you have your product created, we want to make sure it's protected. And one thing I think a lot of people don't realize is that as soon as you hit publish, that work is protected. You do not have to have the copyright symbol on your printable for you to own the rights to it. As soon as it's published, it's yours and for you alone to use. So if you found somebody else was using that on their website, you can file a DCMA takedown to, with their host and say, hey, they're using my form illegally, they don't have permission. However, you cannot sue that person unless you've registered the copyright. That is something that goes through the trademark office and it can take anywhere from six to 18 months and cost, you know, $50 and more to get that done. So unless you registered your work, you're not going to be able to collect any damages. You can just ask them to take it down. Now, one thing I think a lot of people don't think about is your reader and getting them the ability to print whatever it is that you have offered to sale for them. They are going to probably need your permission, especially if you put the copyright symbol on your work. And the reason is if they send that off to the UPS store, FedEx print, Office Depot, or an external party, that company legally cannot reproduce or print that without an um, a release. They have to have that. So you need to keep that in mind as well. So small printables, probably not as big of an issue, but things that get larger, you know, 30, 40, 50 page printables, you are going to want to maybe include a release that you sell or you include for free with the paid product so they can get that product printed. So now let's see here. Let's go into a few of these uh, pages, okay? And not that one. Here we go. All right. Mom Beach. So if this is your site, Mom Beach, we're going to look here to see what it is we might be able to create for you. So this is her article. It is 117 simple ways on how to make money from home. All right. So she has this great thing here and she's got some ideas and she has these things listed here. Let's see here. She could do, you can do, um, online surveys, you can do drop shipping. Oh my goodness, there's so many different things here. What I would do, so there's a lot here, and as a user, that's a lot of different things to do. I'd probably categorize this first of all by like, you know, different types of categories like online, those types of things. But I would create some sort of a workbook of the 10 best companies that you can use to sell from home or um, maybe a how to start a blog workbook or a worksheet on different strategies like have them do research like a um, work from home workbook where they can learn how to research what they want to do the companies to consider you know different things to keep in mind something along that line might work really really well when you're trying to come up with different ideas because you've got a ton of things here. So uh, yeah, that's what I would consider doing here is some sort of a book or workbook. 
Uh, you might even be able to turn this 117 ideas into 125 and you could sell a book. The problem with the book is affiliate links. You have to make sure that uh, you can include them in there. Um, but you could sell something for a reasonable fee on this that people would want to fill out a workbook, the research, you know, or some guide to help them working from home so that they can follow along and figure out what it is they can do to make money. You could even pick out one or two of these topics and you could create a product around that. So um, the online space, let's use that for example. What are some different ways you can make money working from home online? Or jobs you can do to make money working at home on your computer? And you could list those as well as a few others as well. And you can sell it for a low price point and then fill the thing with affiliate links that are allowed, of course, and you can capture even more income on the backside by getting those affiliates to want to sign up. Next one is, um, looks like Sincerely Yours, Motherhood Eyeliner Life, just winging it. So on this one, she has this post. It is Toddler Gift Guide, Presents That Aren't Toys. So I'm going to come back through here. Okay, so the problem with this is there's not really anything that you could do as far as the product here. I would take the stance of 25 days of Christmas activities to do with your toddler and a book that they could purchase or a planner with printables, worksheets and things along that line of things that the reader might be able to purchase to help them get through the holidays. So this is all about things that aren't toys and you could have activities to do during the holiday to instill the Christmas spirit, focus on the real meaning of Christmas, et cetera, et cetera, and fun worksheets, printables, uh, games, crafts, things like that could be a lot of fun and you might be able to sell it for a decent price to get people to want to buy. So that's a product you might be able to create. Okay, we've got oldest mom on the block. I love the name of this. This is hilarious. Okay. Um, let's see here. So I needed a post, so I'm just going to have to go. Um, let's see here. This was just a home page. So I know that you're working on updating all of this right now. I'm just going to come in here, kind of just try to find an article since we didn't have one. Um, let's see here. I'm um, with this ultimate planning guide for baby showers. All right. So what I would do on something like this baby, sh baby shower thing, I would find a way to have a, like a planning workbook. It could be a guest list. It could be games. It could be a thing for the registry. It could be a food. It could be everything that they have to do here. Turn this into a guide, right? This could be a planner, like, um, here's when are we going to have it? You know, where is it going to be held? The date, the time, some sort of a blog, a baby shower planning guide that people could download, that they could have everything they needed right in front of them to plan the perfect baby shower. And it could even include like a bonus guide of like the top 10 things every new mom really needs. And as long as it's not Amazon, you might be able to put affiliate links in there as well. So yes, you sell it on the front end and maybe you can get some more money on the back end through the affiliate. All right, here is Tree Snail Love. Okay, here, let's close that out. Okay, so this is selling, market and selling your homemade lip balm. Okay, hold on here. Is that... Is that all that there is? Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was just confused because I was trying to figure out what, hold on here. I didn't realize this was, I thought this was the end of the article. So just something you might keep in mind, whoever owns this, that I thought I was done. So you might not want to have this box in here because I didn't realize there was content below there. Um, so I would do a guide on how to sell this with like checklists and options and different things. So it's like to sell your homemade lip balm and have them, you know, maybe a guide to research where they want to sell, their pricing, um, the marketing that they're going to do. 
that um, you've got these marketing tips, but these could work great in individual checklists. You know, it's like, how do we add this? You know, I've got, I want to sell them individually, like the individual planner and how you're going to work that. If you're going to do a bundle, um, if you're going to offer personalization, it's kind of like a checklist to help them go through these different things. Maybe some resources in here that you don't talk about in the blog post. But I think some sort of a planning or a uh, marketing guide would be really, really good to help your reader figure out how to sell, maybe platforms to sell, and different things like that. Because I think a lot of times people don't know where to sell. Like you've got here, you've got the craft fairs, you've got boutiques, but you know, different places like that. And there's like different online retail stores. You could set up a shop, those types of things as to where they could sell that lip balm. Okay, um, let's see here. Okay, mom learning on the job. Eight items in your hospital bag. Okay, so on this, so you've got this free, this one like freebie thing here. Um, I would look at, you know, maybe some sort of a new mom's guide, and it could be full filled with um, helpful resources. It could be a checklist of everything to do before you come home from the hospital. What do you need to take to the hospital for the baby? What are the items you need to have at home once you get home for the baby? Um, maybe it could be, you know, include, again, affiliate links in there. You could go beyond that hospital bag and, like, think about the husband. You know, what does dad need to have ready? You know, that type of a thing. So some sort of a, you know, expecting planner that will give them not only this form, but every other form that they need to help make sure they've got everything taken care of before that new baby comes home. All right, so then we've got financially minded millennial. And here we've got her frugal, she's got 27 extremely helpful and simple frugal living tips. Okay, so you've got this toolkit here. Um, so what is in the toolkit? I would look at that toolkit to see if you could take that toolkit, pare it down. Let's say the toolkit's 10 pages, make the toolkit five and take the other five pages and add a few more forms to it. And just, so you've got this toolkit and then you can make it the workbook. Like they've got all these basic tools to get started, but then there's this workbook with more in-depth forms and things that they can use to get out of debt. That might work for this as a tripwire, which a tripwire happens once they buy, they sign up for your list. A tripwire is the page that shows immediately after they sign up to try to get them to buy. But when it comes to frugal living tips, um, yeah, let's see here. Looks like you've collected these all over. Um, if anybody else sees anything, you guys can also post that here if you come up with any ideas. I'm just kind of looking through here. Um, I would maybe find one topic, like, like the frugal food tips, and you could have some sort of a guide, a, like a guide to save money on food. It could include meal planner, shopping list, um, strategies, maybe couponing tips. This whole guide that helps them save money on food. So find these individual topics in here and you could create some sort of a book or something along that line that people could purchase and they would be able to buy from you. So let's see here. So now one other thing I wanna kind of show you guys. So I've created, like I've been doing this for a long, long time. And so I wanted to be able to help you all. And I really tried to thought, I'll just write a blog post, right? And my blog post just kept going and going and going because I'm the kind of person that if anybody reads any of my articles, I don't just like one off it. I just like here, I don't say that. I'm like, you need to go here. You need to click there. You need to do this. You need to do that because that's how I learn. I need someone to literally like walk me through it like I'm five, right? <laughs> I want someone to show me everything. So I've created this new course that is launched just today. And it's called Product Perfection. And guys, it's everything you need to make, know about making and selling printables, right? Um, an in-depth research and analysis on how to figure out what to sell on your site, how to create the printable with step-by-step -step instructions, how to make those really cool looking flat lays, doors of lays that you guys see people using, how to price them, where to sell them, how to market them, all this stuff. And 
I've taken the standpoint that everybody learns differently. And like I've said, for me, it's all about giving value where you guys need it. And so everything is in video and text because I don't learn through video. I have a hard time watching videos to learn. I just am not a big fan of that. And so if I'm in a video only course, I kind of shudder. I want to read it because I am that kind of a person. But I know other people love to watch a video. So this has both options in there and it has amazing templates and checklists. There is a product planner worksheet that is 18 pages long and I am not even exaggerating to help you figure out the perfect products to sell on your site. Um, that's how much I think goes into creating a product is really analyzing things from several different angles. Uh, you may already know what you want to sell, but if you don't, that can really help you. And the really cool thing in here is you get support from me as well as other students because we have a Facebook group. And so you can come in there. I'm present. You know, I'm not some of these people who sell a course and then they disappear and you never see them again. That's just not how I operate. The price of the course is $97 and it doesn't come with just the course guys you get lifetime access and as i said i'm present you also get the easy printables course which is a value of 27 dollars, and it is my step-by-step -step process of how to make a printable because selling printables is one thing but you need to know where to start you also get again access to that facebook group where you get priority status from me if it means i need to jump on a phone call with you whatever i am there to support you 100 percent you also get my planning guide which is my in-depth planner for you to use to follow along with the course to make sure you know exactly what to create, how to price it, how to scope out the competition, everything you need. So it's in writing right in front of you during the entire process. So go ahead and click on the link that I've got here uh, attached to the webinar and you guys can get signed up. And I hope to see you inside of the course. Have a great day.